Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe the Lord has been faithful to us today by the grace of God. We have enjoyed tremendous works from His hand. Hallelujah. Why don't we lift up our voice and just appreciate Him for this day? Celebrate the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, for His kindness and for His faithfulness in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. While well, we appreciate you, we exalt your name, O Jesus. We celebrate you, King of all praise. We thank you this night. We thank you for Lord, everything you have done for us, O Lord. Thank you for the 17th day of this month, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Who is like unto thee, O Lord. We celebrate you. We give all the praise and honor. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining us, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. And thank you for sustaining us. We celebrate you, Lord. We give you all the praise and honor this night. We give you all the praise and honor, God. We appreciate you. We give you all the glory. Thank you for your word. Thank you for a blessed Sunday like this, O Lord. Thank you for taking care of all our needs and supplying unto us. Thank you for the teaching us your word, for the revelations that has come forth. Lord, we appreciate you. We give you all the praise and honor. Thank you, Heavenly Father. To you alone be all the glory. To you alone be all the praise and honor. We appreciate you, King of all praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we are given thanks. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are given thanks. I believe God has given us a blessed day. We have received from Him. We have heard from Him. We have been tremendously blessed. Who is like unto our God? Hallelujah. To Him alone, we give all the glory. And today night, we finish on our series of health. And today, we'll be looking at thanksgiving by faith. Amen. I know we have been praying and believing God for one thing or another, especially for the health of our family members or any other person. And today, as we conclude on the series, I believe God will shall bless us in the name of Jesus. In case you miss, why not? Or if any of your friends may want to see it, but you can to check on our YouTube page. The teachings are there. Just teach, go to YouTube and write Abraham Shem's Ministries, and you shall find all the teachings by the grace of God for your impartation and life. And if you're online, why don't you share your page with your friends? Call a friend, call your sister, call your brother, wherever you're living with, that they may partake of the word of God today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 32, the Bible says, I commend you the word of its grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. I believe the entrance of our word has given us light, and we have known that the principal thing that God wants us healthy in Jesus' name. Now, today night, we'll be looking by thanksgiving by faith. Thanksgiving by faith. Thanksgiving is something that we need to do by faith. It has nothing to do with whatever you receive. Most of us, we are from our culture, we only say thank you when we are given things. Amen. Or when something is applied to us, that's when we remember to give God thanks. But in the angle of God, God has a different idea. Amen. That's why we are going to be thanksgiving by faith. Amen. The book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse from verse 4 to 6. Philippians chapter 4. From verse 4 to 6. By the grace of God, you can open there. By the Lord, give us understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Philippians chapter 4, from verse 4 to 6. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Hallelujah. With prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. But it says rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And let your moderation be known unto all men. Moderation, your kind of lifestyle. Amen. Be known to all men that your lifestyle is for thinking God praise, of thanking God. Then after doing all that, it says with prayer and supplication, let your thanks with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So be prayer is effective when it starts with thanksgiving. Amen. Prayer becomes very effective when we start with thanksgiving. The book of First Thessalonians, by the grace of God. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, from verse 16 to 18. The Bible says very well, rejoice evermore. Amen. Pray without what? Ceasing. And it says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So if you have been asking yourself, what is the will of God? That is it. The will of God is for you to give him thanks. That is the will of God. For you to give him thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So you have, you have never known the will of God for your life. That is the will of God. It's for you to give him thanks. It's for you to give him what? Thanks. That's why in every service we have, we start with an opening prayer of thanksgiving. We go to praise and worship with thanksgiving. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayers as with thanksgiving. Now, thanksgiving is critical because it's the will of God. God, God wants you to put yourself into remembrance that his faithfulness never ceases. Hallelujah. He's a kind God in the name of Jesus Christ. So what you see from the verses above, number one, that we should rejoice. We should rejoice. We should rejoice continuously. Number two, we are saying from the book of 1 Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. Philippians says, make your request be made known to God. Amen. After rejoicing, pray without ceasing. Then he says, do it with thanksgiving. Amen. Do it with thanksgiving. As your mother are mending prayers, do it with what? Thanksgiving. And lastly, you should know it is the will of God concerning you. So if thanksgiving is the will of God concerning us now, why should we give thanksgiving? We should give thanksgiving by faith. Amen. But we should know that in everything and with thanksgiving. So thanksgiving occurs in two parts. In whatever you are doing and with whatever you have. Amen. What do you have? You have your soul, your body and everything. You do it with thanksgiving. Be grateful. And when you are giving God thanks, in that scenario, be giving God thanks. So in everything, give thanks, giving God praise. With what? With rejoicing in your heart. Amen. Now, what's thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is equals to faith in action. Thanksgiving is faith in action. You, yes, I'm just thanking God for things I'm yet to receive. I'm yet to encounter, but now, what well, that is thanksgiving, thanksgiving is faith in action. As it says, with prayer, your request be made known to God with thanksgiving. So when you are making your request with thanksgiving, you are making faith available in action. Faith in action. And we see that in scenarios of Jesus, when Jesus was giving God thanks, it was faith in action. So thanksgiving is faith in what? Action. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So faith is not a result of anything I got. But what I'm sure about, amen, <laughs> faith is not a result of anything I got. Faith is not a result of anything I got, but what I'm sure about. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, it says, faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, I have faith, I am hoping for it, yet I've not received it. That's why I'm saying faith is not a result of anything I got. Mm -mm. I'm not giving out thanks because I got it. No, 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 no. But what I'm sure about, Amen. That's why with prayer and thanksgiving, you must give God praise. So thanksgiving is critical for your life. Give God thanks by faith. By faith is not a result of anything I got, but what I'm sure about. What are you sure about? Are you sure God will heal you? Are you sure God will transform you? Are you sure God will give you an open door? Then give thanksgiving with faith. With prayer, supplication, make with thanksgiving. Make your request be made known to God. So thanksgiving is equal to faith in action. Every time we give God thanks, we are duplicating your faith in action. Yet you have not received it, but you're giving God thanks. Lord, thank you for my body. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. What are you doing? You have faith in action. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we give thanks, we yield increase. The book of Psalms chapter 67. So let us praise the Lord and let the earth yield an increase. Amen. So when you praise God, when you give God thanks, you receive increase. You want increase in your life? Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Psalm chapter 67. Let us just read it. Psalm 67, verse 5 to 6. Hallelujah. Psalm 67, verse 5 to 6. The Bible says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield an increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. Amen. The blessing is in thanksgiving. That's what I've told you. Thanksgiving is equals to faith in action. When you are giving God thanks, it means your faith is in action. When you are giving God thanks for things that are not seen, that are yet to be seen, you are what? Giving God thanks to his word, faith in action. And I've said faith is not a result of anything I got, but what I'm sure about. Are you sure God will do a transformation for you? Give him thanks. Are you sure God will come through for you? Give him thanks. So thanksgiving is critical. When you give God thanks, what will happen? God will bless you. Amen. God will bless you by giving him thanks. What is it? And we have seen the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 18. It is the will of God concerning us for, through Christ Jesus. So when you fulfill the will of God, God will bless you. Amen. So you must give God thanks continuously. So we should form an attitude of doing everything as the Christians, including in prayer. Thanksgiving should be what? An attitude 
that you should have and do it every time, including in prayer. Now, what makes prayer easy is when you start prayer with thanksgiving. You can't just say, Father, give me bread. No, 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 no. If you want your parent to do something for you, or you want someone to be happy with you, first of all, you must please him. Amen? You must make him happy. You must tell him how good it is. Amen? You must tell them how lovely it is. Every one of us who have managed to, by God's grace, we are married. We didn't start by telling our wife, we want to marry you. No. We were able to, first of all, give him praise, give them praise. The doing of the Lord in their lives. Amen. Now, when you do that, what's happening? You are warming the moment. That's the same thing. When you give God thanks, you're moving his hands into action. That's why thanksgiving is what? Is equal to faith in action. The book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 2. So you must start your prayers with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Everything you do, thanksgiving. 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 Amen. Colossians. I believe we shall open there. Colossians is after the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 2. The Bible says what? Continue in prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. Amen. Just you continue in prayer, but watch that prayer with thanksgiving. Faith in action. I am praying for bread, but I am watching it with thanksgiving that it will come through. That's why I say if thanksgiving is equal to faith in action. You are believing God, you come through. Lord, I've prayed for bread and I thank you for it shall come through. I celebrate you for it shall come through. I give you, I'm praying God for children. I'm praying God for our job. I'm, Lord, I'm believing you start a business, but I should watch it with thanksgiving. So prayer that is not watched with thanksgiving can never give you results. As you've seen the book of Psalms chapter 67, when you give God praise, God will bless you. The earth will yield thy own increase. Amen. So whenever you're doing something, when you're praying, when you're doing everything, watch that prayer in the eyes of thanksgiving. That God will do it for you. Amen. And you will spend your time giving God quality thanks because his death is not deaf to hear. His ear is not deaf to hear, neither is answer to save. You have an assurance. Amen. And as I said, faith is not a result of anything I got, but what I'm sure about. I've not received the result, but I'm sure about it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible says clearly, Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as he have been taught, abounding therein. With what? Thanksgiving. So you are bound in faith with thanksgiving. The result of your faith is as equal to their thanksgiving. The attitude of thanksgiving makes your faith to be fruitful. Makes your faith to be fruitful. Amen. Hallelujah. Now this daughter danced. Dance and he told the king told him, even half of my kingdom I shall give to you. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving moves the hands of people. Thanksgiving opens everything. So in everything you do, do it with thanksgiving. Amen. Now, even also in that point, you need to check Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, Well, well, be careful of nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be not not made known to God. So in everything you're doing, in everything, Lord, I bless your name. I celebrate you. I am praying for my children. I'm praying for my body. I'm praying for my job. In that prayer of your job, do it with thanksgiving. I remind you again, thanksgiving is equal to faith in action. When you're giving God thanks, it means you believe we'll do it. Amen. You believe we'll do it. Psalms chapter 100, verse 4. It says, enter into the gates with what? Thanksgiving. And enter his courts with what? Praise. Into, into, into. So when you open the door of the church, enter it in thanksgiving. Before you receive the word, before you say anything, in. So when you start your life tomorrow morning, start it with what? In thanksgiving. When you do it in thanksgiving, it means you have faith for the day. It's a repercussion that is a result that you have faith that God will do something for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Look at this powerful scripture. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Even science has proved it that those people who approve their children when they are young, they tell their children they are beautiful, they tell their children they are good, they are intelligent. Those children grow with confidence. Amen. So every time you start anything with thanksgiving, things will work out for you. Amen. Start your day with thanksgiving. Finish your day with thanksgiving. Then it will open you. When you are starting your prayer, start it with what? Thanksgiving. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. The Bible says clearly. Better than his word. It says, By him, therefore, 
let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. And that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That's the fruit of our lips. So if you want to see anything you say that comes to pass, if you want to see the power of everything you say, it starts by opening your mouth with thanksgiving. When you wake up tomorrow in the bed, just say thank you, Jesus. Amen. When you're going to rest, say thank you, Jesus. What are you doing? You're opening yourself into the realms of new ideas. Hallelujah. Of new impartation in the name of Jesus. So thanksgiving brings assurance in all we do. Thanksgiving brings what? Assurance in all we do. Imagine meeting someone and someone compliments you first. What happens to you? You get an assurance with that person that day. You say, at least they said my dress is beautiful. They say they love my haircut. They love my voice. What's happening? It gives you assurance. Thanksgiving brings assurance in all we do. When you start your prayer with thanksgiving, you get assurance that you cannot reach the ceiling. Amen. Why most of us who are feeling our prayers are limited is because we never started with thanksgiving. That's why when they say, Master teaches how to pray, what did Jesus teach them how to pray? Start with thanksgiving and finish with thanksgiving. Our Father, what in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now see, assurance. When you start anything with thanksgiving, you receive assurance. So there's no prayer that is the same. The prayers that have effect is the one which has been born out of thanksgiving. There's nothing difficult for God to do. The question is, how difficult is your lips to give God thanks? And the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 50 says, it's the fruit of our lips. If you want to see anything we say come to pass, we must start with thanksgiving. Amen. The assurance, thanksgiving gives you assurance in everything in the name of Jesus Christ. So when they are thankful, then when we are thankful, we are ushered into the presence of God. And the presence of God, there is peace, no struggling, answers, and more. Amen. When we are thankful, we are entering into the presence of God. God inhabits the presence of his people. So when you are thankful, God is there with you. Listen to me. You are not barren. What you just need to say, Lord, thank you for the fruit of the womb. Then God will inhabit that room and you'll be able to conceive in the name of Jesus Christ. You have been praying on your neck. Yeah, yes, Lord, Lord, thank you for my ears. I appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for my life. The man who are healed, the one who returned to give God thanks, Jesus told him, you have been made whole. So wholeness comes when you give God thanks. We can pray for healing, we can pray for restoration, but your restoration is not whole until you return to give God thanks. And now you start to give God thanks. Amen. So in thanksgiving, there's the presence of God is there. The presence of God is there. There is peace when you need peace. There is no more struggling. Amen. There's answers and for more. The book of Psalms chapter 95, verse 2 to 3. Psalms 95, verse 2 to 3, by the grace of God. You can open there. Psalm chapter 95. Verse 2 to 3. The Bible says, Let us come before his presence. With what? With thanksgiving. And make a joyful noise unto him. With Psalms. For the Lord is great and the great king above all gods. Amen. Let us come with thanksgiving. 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 So anything that you have, Lord, I thank you for this one. We have prayed for your miracles. We have prayed for that testimony book. But now, Completely with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is in faith in action. When you thank someone without seeing anything, this faith in action. Amen. For example, when you tell someone, can you bring me a cup of coffee? Before they bring it and tell them thank you. By the time they say yes and you say thank you, they will bring for you the sweetest cup of coffee ever. Amen. But when you wait for them to bring for you, then you say thank you. You may taste something that is very indifferent. Amen. <laughs> so now, thanksgiving will ushers you gives you assurance. It takes you to the presence of God. Hallelujah. You enjoy the knowledge of the day. You, en you, you enjoy it. The book of Psalms chapter 16 verse 7. Psalms chapter 16 verse 7. Hallelujah. Psalm 16 verse 7. I believe God is giving us understanding by the grace of God. Because you have been praying for her. You have been praying for restoration. Now we should give God thanks. Psalms chapter 16 verse 7. I will, say, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel? My rest also instructs me in the night season. I will do what? I will bless the Lord. Who has done what? He has given me counsel. And my rest also instruct me in the night seasons. God has been instructing you. God has been counseling you. Why don't you give him thanks for that verse? 
Yes, you may not have seen authority, but give him thanks. When you give God thanks, you are showing him that I'm, Lord, I'm sure as of you, Lord. I am sure you will do it. Thanksgiving is equal to faith in action. Most of us say, show me your faith. The only way I can see your faith is based on your attitude of thanksgiving. The more you are thankful, it shows you have faith. Because people who are not thankful, they are, not, they are faithless in general. They don't believe things will work. They are always pessimistic. They are always arguing. They are always questioning. They are always murmuring. Be thankful if you are sure God will do something for you. You listen to me. When they say there's a casting down, you shall be said there's a lifting up. Amen. Your report is different. Whose report will you believe in? The book of Numbers, these people came back and they said we saw giants. But there were two Hebrew boys who said we were well able. What They were giving a thankful report. Amen. And it's recorded in the scriptures, even after all that, their generation was preserved because of their attitude. The Lord, we thank you for the Lord who removed us from the hands of the Egyptians. We give us victory this day. Amen. Being thankful. Being thankful is critical. So praise builds your assurance in God's word. When you thank God, it builds your assurance. Before you open the word of God, just say, Lord, thank you for today I'm receiving from you. Thank you. When you do that, when you open the word of God, you tend to receive from him. Before you pray, why don't you worship him first? When you worship God, what happens? You receive from God. Amen. You receive from God. It's the open thing that will give you secrets, will help you see the revelations of the word of God. Lord, I open my eyes. I appreciate you for your opening my eyes yesterday. I was reading the book of Psalms. Thank you for whatever you told me. Lord, today I am supposed to receive your word. I thank you again. That's why even before we started this session, I tell you, let us give God thanks. Why are we doing that? We are ushering ourselves to the presence of God. Amen. So praise builds our assurance in God's word. Before you do anything. So if you need assurance of your health or expectation, give God what? Thanks. Give him thanks before you make express expectations. Before you pray for him, just say thank you, Father, for my body. Thank you for everything. And then, Father, I see your word. You see in the book of Isaiah 3, verse 5, by, my, by your stripes, I was healed. Lord, I command health in my body. But see, you started with thanksgiving. With that attitude of thanksgiving, you already have assurance that that scripture can work. Amen. Now, see, why we feel we are struggling in prayer is because we never started it with thanksgiving at all. We never started with thanksgiving. Why we feel we are struggling with things is because we never started with thanksgiving. Anything you start with thanksgiving makes it easier for you. Now, thanksgiving leads to praise, and praise leads to worship. If, if, if you are not thankful, you can never be praiseful. If you are not thankful, you cannot be a worshiper. You need to know that. Worshippers are, are made out of thankful people. Worship, praiseful people are made out of thankful people. You can't say you are a praise and worship leader and you are not thankful. Then it means you have been singing, singing lyrics. <laughs> Amen. This lyrics does not take anyone anywhere. There's how God expects us to praise him and worship him. And, but you see, for you to praise him and worship him, you must be thankful. You must be a man and a woman who works in the thanksgiving. Amen. So how am I to offer praise? Number one, Psalms chapter 149 verse 6. Psalms 149 verse 6. Psalms 149 verse 6. Because I've told you now, you can't be praiseful if you're not thankful. Amen. That's why some of us never manage to write songs. Why? Because we are never thankful. We just sing lyrics. When you are thankful, God will give you melody. He, give me joy in my heart. Give the praising. Give me joy in my heart. I pray. Hallelujah. When you are singing like that, what is happening? God, the joy is rising. The rejoicing of the Lord. Now you are receiving from Him. Amen. Psalms 149, verse 6. The Bible says clearly, let us let the high presence of God be in thy mouth and a two-edged sword in the hand. You understand? What is that sword in your hand doing there? It's to remind you how God has been faithful. It's to remind you how God has been caring. It's to remind you how God has been good. Okay, let me, you're saying, okay, let me show you this two-edged sword. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Ephesians 6, 17. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Ephesians after the book of Galatians, for the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. The Bible says clearly, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So when you are praising God, have a double-edged sword in your hand. What? Take the word of God when you are praising God. Now, and I've told you what is faith. 
I've told you faith is not a result of anything I got, but an assurance of what I have. Amen. I take it. When I'm starting to give God praise, I take the word of God. I'm sure that God will answer my prayer. Amen. You must praise God with a double-edged sword in your hand. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. It shows you what the word of God is. When you take the word of God is, this is what should be in your mind. Hebrews 4 12. For the word of God is quick, is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing asunder the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of heart. That's why when you praise God, you are healed. Your heart. That's what the Bible says, a merry heart doeth good than medicine. Amen. Now, the merriness in it. When you praise God with his word, you are sure that God will do something new for you. You are sure God will do it for you. God will give it permanently to you. Give God praise with assurance. Amen. With assurance in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. So praise God with a double-edged sword. Double-edged what? Sword. Number two, praise God with understanding. The book of Psalms chapter 47. Verse 7. Psalms 47. Verse 7. Hallelujah. I believe God is giving us understanding. That's why I say you cannot be praiseful if you're not thankful. What am I thankful about? The word of God. That's why now I'm praising God with the word. Now, what am I thankful for? God has understood me. God managed to understand my prayer and he answered it. So I praise God with understanding. Psalm chapter 47, verse 7. The Bible says what? For... Yes. Yeah, Psalm 47, verse 7. The Bible says, For the God is the king of the singing praises with what? Understanding. Amen. You can't thank someone if you don't understand them. Am I saying the truth? You, you must do it. Do thanksgiving that leads to praise with understanding. Why are you grateful to God? God, I understand God will heal me. I understand God will come through for me. I understand God will be there for me. I understand God will change away my situation. Psalms 26, it says, As when God turned around the captivity of Israel, we were like them that trained. Amen. That is understanding. <laughs> The, when God turned around that captivity, we were like them that don't. Because I have understanding, God is the only one who can turn around my captivity. Amen? Hallelujah. Number two, you must know that you can only worship God with understanding when you are thankful. You only worship God when you are what? Thankful. You can't worship God if you are not thankful. And how am I supposed to worship God? In truth. In truth. Lord, I worship you for you are not a son of man to lie. I worship you because your word is ever true. I worship you because you are the ancient of days. I worship you because you are I am who I am. You are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Horoi. You are the beginning, my source, my shield, my protector. Why? Thanksgiving makes you a deep worshiper. Amen. So you must thank God with the truth. So you can never worship God if you are not thankful. You can come there in front of everyone and say I'm leading people in worship, but yourself you are not worshiping because why? You are not thankful when you went there. Because someone told you something or someone comment. No, no, no. Do not allow those. Be thankful. When you are thankful, you become a deep worshiper. When you are th when you are thankful, you worship God also in the spirit. Amen. You find yourself just praying in the spirit, basting in the Holy Ghost. The book of John chapter 4 verse 24. God is seeking for those who shall worship him in what? In truth and in what? In spirit. You can only worship God in truth and in spirit if you are thankful. Amen. If you are thankful. Thanksgiving is what makes you to become praiseful. Thanksgiving is what makes you to be a deep worshiper. Amen. Without them, you can't. God has already healed you. What you need to do? Thank him. When you thank him and praise him, now the presence of God will take over you. As you thank him and start worshiping, the truth of the word will be manifested in your life. Amen. What you need to see, just be thankful. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you. We give you all the glory. We celebrate you. Mashu Telebariada came Protoskia. What is happening? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is what is making you give praise. Thanksgiving is what makes you worship. Every songwriter is there or praises of worship leader who's listening to me. If you want to be a minister to be very impactful, be a thankful person. Look at David. He says, Seven days will I praise you. Three days will I pray. Look at all the Psalms he wrote. He wrote over 150 Psalms. Amen. Look at Solomon. How many books of Proverbs? Proverbs. 31 chapters, the book of Exodus, how many chapters are there? The book of Songs of Solomon, how many are there? Because what? They were thankful people. When you are thankful, you become poetic. 
When you are thankful, you love melodies. Amen. That's why the Bible says, speak to yourself in hymns and spiritual songs. You cannot only speak to yourself in hymns and spiritual songs if you are not thankful. So thanksgiving keeps you your own class. Thanksgiving makes you operate in your own class. Amen. So thanksgiving is critical for you to see the hand of God. God has already healed our house throughout this week. Everything you have been praying, praying for God, even when you started the fasting on the May fast, today is 17 days already gone. God already has, but now maintain yourself being thankful. Before you read the word, be thankful. Before you go to the day, go be thankful. Before you start praying, be thankful. Worship him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, when you become thankful in everything and with everything, amen. When you become thankful in everything and with everything, amen. Most of us are only, we are only thankful in what people have done for us, but not with what we have. Be thankful with in, with and in. When you are thankful in everything and with everything, God's hands will remain continuous in your life. Amen. The book of John chapter 11, verse 41. John chapter 11, verse 41. Hallelujah. I believe you are gaining understanding. So there's no praise and there's no worship if there's no thankfulness. Amen. If you want to praise God for that testimony, start being thankful for healing you first. Start by giving thankful. And I told you, thanksgiving is equals to faith in action. Amen. I, I have faith not because of whatever I have, but whatever I'm sure about. Amen. John chapter 11. Amen and amen. Verse 41. John chapter 11, verse 41. Be thankful. Then they took away the stone from the place that the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee, for thou hast had me. Did you hear how he started his prayer? Just see how Jesus started his prayer. I studied that and I noticed the prayers of Jesus starts with thanksgiving. Amen. When you start with thanksgiving, you make faith available. Faith to command things to respond. Because thanksgiving makes you be assured that God will answer you. I thank thee for your heart, for thou hast had me. And, and I knew that thou hearest me always. Amen. But because of these people we stand here, somebody, I say that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Just start everything with thanksgiving. I know you may be going through trial times right now. You may say, what is it that give God thanks? Ah, and I've said now, give me thanksgiving in and with everything. What do you have around you? Give thanks God for that and you will see his hand for many in the name of Jesus Christ. Lazarus was died for three days. He was a friend of Jesus. And Jesus even wept on his death. But when he rolled the stone, Jesus didn't say, oh God, let Lazarus wake up. No, 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 no. He said, Father, I thank you for you always hear what? Me. When he did that one, there was assurance in faith in him. He became to remember that the same God who raised men from the dead will raise this Lazarus. Amen. When you start giving God thanks, you remember his testimonies. You remember his faithfulness. You remember what he has done for you. You remember what he's about to do for you. Thanksgiving sets you in an atmosphere of remembrance of the faithfulness of God. Amen. When you are thankful, that's what happens. Now, for you to be thankful, you must have a mentality of a child. And that's a funny thing if I say so. Children are found people that are always grateful. They are always grateful. When you are thankful, I have said very well, it, you need to have a mentality of a child. Have such kind of mentality. Children never carry offense. Check properly. I have a child in my house. We fight one minute. The next minute we are happy as a kings and queens. Amen. Like nothing ever happened. Amen. God wants you to have a mentality of thanksgiving. When you carry a mentality of thanksgiving, you make the presence of God to encamp it around you. So you need to maintain thanksgiving in your heart. In and with everything, as I've told you. And I've told you, there's no way you can be praiseful and be a deep worshiper if you're not thankful. Start with thanksgiving. Start with thanksgiving. Now, Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. When he says very well, let, me, let us just read it. Let me not quote. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. It's powerful here. The strength you need is starting with having a mentality of a child. Amen. Sometimes we come to prayer, we are having a very, maybe the day was not as we expected. Things were not the way we expected. 
But this is what God is talking about. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. The Bible says very well. Out of the mouth of babes, out of the mouth of babes, what does God do? And sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thy enemies. Thou may steal the enemy, thou mightest steal the, in the enemy and the avenger. Out of the mouth. What is coming out of the mouth of babes? Look at the book of Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. By the grace of God, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Amen. Verse 25. Verse 25. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. The Bible says what? And the, the time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven, and that because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto the babes. He has revealed them unto the babes. Why? Thanksgiving gives you access to revelation and insights. And as I've told you right now, thanksgiving is equal to faith. It's a faith in action. When you are thankful, you are showing God your faith is in action. Yes, you may never have something to give God thanks, but you are thankful in everything and with everything. Amen. And faith is not a result of anything I got, but what I'm sure about. I'm just sure things will work out. I am thankful. But when you are thankful, what happens? You start praising God and become a deep worshiper of him. Because you will praise God with the two-edged sword in your hand, according to the book of Psalms, chapter 149. You will praise God with understanding, according to the book of Psalms 47. You will worship God in truth and in spirit, according to the book of John 4, 24. You see the power of thanksgiving. Now, when you have a babe's mentality, a child's mentality, thanksgiving will never leave your courts. Even if now you fight with your child, your son and your daughter, they will still call you daddy. Is it true? They leave all the heavy weights alone. And they remember who they are. When you are thankful, you put away all your personal persons. Amen. And you remember the king of all kings. Amen. You tend to remember who he is. When you are thankful, you have put yourself to remembrance of his faithfulness. So anything we want God to do for us, we will only start with us carrying an attitude of thanksgiving. As I was showing in the book of John chapter 11, and Jesus was standing at the tomb of Lazarus. He said, Father, I thank you for you always hear me. Thanksgiving. He put God to remember us, and he put himself to remember us that God is faithful. Amen. So, thank is critical. When you testify through thanksgiving, we often see his work. If you want to see the wondrous work of God, be thankful. Be thankful. God will do a new thing for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The book of Psalm chapter 78. Psalm 78, by the grace of God. Psalm chapter 78. I've said very well, when you are thankful, you put God to remember us. And you also put yourself to remember us. On his ability, how strong he is. Amen. Amen. Psalm chapter 78, verse 4. The Bible says clearly. Amen. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. We will not hide from that. We cannot because we know when we believe on these things, yet we didn't have it. God still did it. Amen. Now we are thankful and we cannot hide it. We will pass over to the generations. We will tell them of the faithfulness of God. Amen. I, I see when my wife is trying to teach my daughter how to pray. She says, Father, I thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. What's happening? Thank you. Now, even now when she does something, she says, thank you. What's happening? Thanksgiving gives you room. To experience God. Thanksgiving puts you to remember us of his faithfulness. Thanksgiving puts away sorrow away from you. Thanksgiving gives you brings for you joy. Now, there's effect of thanksgiving that we need to know. Anything that is broken in thanksgiving gets multiplied. Now, thanksgiving is a sign of brokenness within an individual. Let me tell you, as adults, we have many things that rule our life. We have many things that dangle in our minds. Many things that control our emotions and everything. But when you are thankful to God, it shows you have reached a limit of brokenness. <laughs> Amen. Now think about this. Matthew chapter 15, verse 36 to 38. When my feelings cannot supersede how grateful I am to God, it means I am being broken. I am living in a state of brokenness. Willing for God to use me, make me, design me, make me again. Amen. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. So we need to desire a state of brokenness. 
for us to be continuously thankful. Matthew chapter 15, by the grace of God, verse 36 to 38. Matthew chapter 15, verse 36 to 38. The Bible says, And he took the seven loaves and the, and the fish, fishes, and he gave thanks and broke them, and gave to his disciples and disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And you understand? And he what? He gave thanks. He gave thanks. You can only give thanks if you're willing to be broken. Amen. Lord, I'm willing to pass up, to preserve everything or to bring down anything that has been exalting itself beyond your word. I know things are not the same way, but I am thankful in everything and with everything I have. Amen. Brokenness is a sign of being thankful. And you know, it's not easy to tell someone thank you when they have done something wrong to you. I'm asking the truth. Especially when someone wrongs you. Will you say thank you? You just look at me and say, hmm, you. If it's not for the sake of God. <laughs> that's not thankfulness. Amen. No, 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 no. It says, thank God I am born again. Eh? Just you thank God I'm born again. No, that's not thankfulness. Thankfulness is no matter how you feel, no matter what is going through you, you are willing to be thankful. You suppress your emotions for the sake of the glory of God. Whenever you're going home, you get home, there's a family altar, and they say, let us lift up our voice and give God. You won't throw me around and say, blah, 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 blah. no. You say, Lord, I appreciate you. I thank you in everything and everything I have. Amen. So thankfulness is a state that can be achieved when we are willing to be broken. And when we are broken, what happens? We multiply. We multiply the grace of God in our life. We multiply the hand of God in our life. We multiply the will of God in our life. Amen. As I've shown you, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Thanksgiving is the will of God concerning us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, brokenness is willingness to, say, to be sure of God's faithfulness while you can't see anything. Brokenness is willingness to be sure of God's faithfulness while yet you can't see anything. Oh my, I, 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 just, I am not sure God will do it. I'm sure God will never delay. God will be there. Amen. Whoa, whoa. And you're just thinking like, what? That is willing to be broken. Brokenness is the willingness to be sure of God's faithfulness while you yet you can't see anything. And when you are sure about it, what happens? You give God thanks. No one was sure that Lazarus will come back to life. But Christ was sure. Because Christ was so broken in God. He knew God can never fail him. He knew God is the unchanging changer. He knew God will transform. So be thankful, my friends. God will do something new for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Live a broken life. That I am sure I judge God faithful. He will do it. And the Bible says, Abraham did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. <laughs> Amen. Neither did he stagger the promises of God. And it was judged to him as righteousness. What? He was broken in the will of God. And he was giving God thanks. Amen. He was giving God thanks in everything and with everything he had. Because his word will never fail. When you are thankful, what happens? You start worshiping him. You will give him praise. Amen. So brokenness is willingness to be sure of God's faithfulness. While yet you can't see anything. Why don't we dare this week to give God thanks? Amen. Why don't we try to live a broken life? No matter what you are going through. No matter the pain. No matter the feeling. Jesus wept for Lazarus. He was in pain. Jesus in this scenario, he had 5,000 men. We don't count the women and the children yet. And he didn't know what the supply, but he was thankful. And he gave God thanks. Father, I thank you. And I was observing the prayers of Jesus. It all starts with thanksgiving. I am willing to leave what I'm thinking for the sake of your word. I'm willing to let go of what I feel for the sake of your word. When you do that, you are brokening yourself. When you break yourself before God, God will make you. Amen. God will mend you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bringing every imagination, every thought under the will of God. Amen. And it starts with thanksgiving. When you are thankful, it means you are so sure God will do it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. When I'm broken in thanksgiving through praise, I worship. And worship, he does great works. You need to know that. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, as we start to summarize. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Hallelujah. I believe we are learning something. And we need to maintain that attitude. Hallelujah. Jesus, I thank you. All the stories I've heard about the great men of God, 
Pastor Ia Deboye, Bishop Depo, Bishop Abioye, all of them are here. They spend their time giving God thanks. They're giving God quality thanks. Giving God quality thanks. I'm not surprised by the grace of God working in their life. Because they have not the secret of the Lord can only be found when people know how to give him thanks. You want to tell me they never have challenges? They face. But what do they do? They subject themselves to the will of God by giving God what? Thanks. And as Bishop Odebo says, they have never seen a better yesterday, a better last year. They are always seeing the path of a just man, shining better and brighter to the perfect day. Learning from our fathers in the faith, we need to also embrace those things. Thanksgiving is a secret. Amen. Thanksgiving is the secret. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. The Bible says very well, by his grace. It says, but thanks be to God, which given us victory. Amen. He has given you victory. Amen. But what? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is Paul. He says, give God thanks. Thanks be to him. So the victory you need is by giving God thanks. As you give God thanks, I desire today you shall be here. You shall be transformed. That change of soul you are believing for, may you receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving. It brings victory. That's what I'm telling you. Unless you are broken before God, subjecting your will and your desires and your emotions on the platform of giving God praise in everything and with everything you have, you may never see the victory you desire. Because God inhabits the presence of his people. Someone said, when you pray, there's angelic intervention. When you praise, there's God's intervention. He personally comes down. Amen. Why don't we give God thanks today? Why don't we give God praise? Hallelujah. Why don't you celebrate the King of all kings? Why don't you lift up your voice and just say, Father, thank you. I appreciate you. I celebrate you. There's no one like you. You are a strong God, a mighty God, on time God, the Lord that never delays, always changing my scenarios, always working, doing wonders in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. So failure to walk in thanksgiving, there's something that happens. When you're not thankful to God, the enemy fights you by giving what? Vain imagination. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 21. These are the effects of not giving God thanks. Why most of the people say, I say I feel empty. You feel empty because we are not walking in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving makes you be in contentment and have content in you. Amen. Thanksgiving makes you be in contentment and have content in you. You always have there's something in you. There's something working for your good. Amen. It's Romans chapter 1 verse 21. The Bible says, because that they knew God and they glorified him not as God. Do you see what happened? Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. When you are not thankful, you cannot receive of God. Amen. When you're not thankful, you will have vain imaginations. What if God will not do it? What if it delays? Why are you thinking about those things? The book of Matthew chapter 6, it says, if your earthly father can give you fish when you ask for a serpent, how much more him? Amen. Why are you thinking God will delay? Why are you thinking God will not do it? Why are you thinking God is not? No, 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 don't think that. When you are not thankful, that's why we have vain imaginations. You shall not suffer that affliction a second time in the name of Jesus Christ. Just maintain a thankful lifestyle. That's why we think things that are not right because we are not maintaining an atmosphere of thanksgiving. When you maintain an atmosphere of thanksgiving, faith will be present. And I've told you, thanksgiving is equal to faith in action. Amen. I believe God will do it. I celebrate him. So thanksgiving is praise. Thanksgiving leads us to worship. Thanksgiving lifestyle is makes us walk in brokenness. If you want to stay broken in our life, we're ready to receive of God. Be thankful. I was listening to an Instagram interview between Pastor Poju and Pastor Ia Deboy, and he was asking what that time does he spend in prayer. He said 90% of his time is giving God thanks. Wow. That one hit me like a rock. Poop. And I asked myself, how much percentage do I spend time with giving God thanks? And that's why that man is humble the way he's humble. Brokenness. Brokenness. If you want to walk a lifestyle of brokenness, be thankful. Amen. Thanksgiving will lead you to praise and worship. Your ability to worship God and praise him is based on your platform of thanksgiving. How willing are you to give God thanks? Do you know why music is a powerful thing till now? 
Because music was supposed to give God praise. Music was supposed to bring God all the glory. Amen. That's why music is, music is a form of a gospel by itself. And that's why when we are thankful, God is happy. It is the will of God concerning us. So thanksgiving watches of our life. You need to understand that. Thanksgiving watches of our life. It makes grace available and a smooth flow of our life. And as I conclude today, I tell you, what you want to see and continue watching, see it first in thanksgiving. Do you understand what I'm about? What you want to see and continue watching, what you want to see and continue what? Watching. See it first. See it first in thanksgiving. See it first in what? In thanksgiving. What you want to see and continue watching, see it first in what? Thanksgiving. I tell, conclude within the book of Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. It says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. What you want to see and watch, continue seeing it in thanksgiving. Continue in prayer and watch in thanksgiving. Take a watch on it in thanksgiving. Just watch it in thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. I have already prayed. I am continuing praying, but I am watching it in what? Thanksgiving. With an attitude of praise and worship. What will God do? God will do wondrous things for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, knowing that God has done all that, why don't you lift up our voice wherever you are? Just give God praise. Just bless his name. Worship him. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for a wonderful week. Thank you for whatever is starting for me. Thank you for the impartation of your word today. Matu se pradi. Celebrate the King of all kings. Celebrate the Lord of all lords. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Worship him. Adoin. Ebore bali kato. You are the reason. You are the reason of everything. Lord, thank you for being my supplier, my sustainer, my provider, my preserver, my enabler, my caretaker. Lord, thank you, Lord, for my source, Lord, for providing for me, Lord. Thank you for the life I have. Thank you for the clothes I have. Thank you for the food I have. Thank you for the shelter I enjoy. Thank you for the warmth I enjoy. Thank you, Jesus, for supply, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not, Lord, I thank you for no, there's no pain in my body. Thank you for rescuing me, Lord. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for my businesses. Thank you for my ministry. Thank you for my children. Why don't you give him praise? Why don't you give him thanks? Matu Zebali Adaba Yoto Bika le kotozi ke para e protosi pe kantu sokopa le krute vosh kentezi moni kantoli e kopara damio koskoto li garaba ya tem produza e koraba la gadosora lom pe keteze kotozon lom mira tu sentereba in Jesus mighty name we are praying Father I pray for everyone God give us a garments of praise Lord He give us a garments of praise in our life Lord make us work continuously with thanksgiving in our hearts. Making melodies all the time, oh Lord. Give us a new song every day in the morning, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks for we have assurance, Lord, that your word is true, that you will do it for us again and again. That's why this night we bless your name. We celebrate you. And for everyone believing for something, oh Lord, through the attitude of thanksgiving and giving praise, Lord, visit them in the name of Jesus Christ. See them through in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen and amen. I believe you have been tremendously blessed. For those of us who missed the teachings for healing, you can check our Facebook page, Abraham Shems Ministries, or our YouTube page, Abraham Shems Ministries also. You'll find all the teachings about health that we've been talking about since last Sunday. As to, until today, we have concluded with Thanksgiving. From tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, we meet for morning devotions. As this week, my sons in the faith and my wife will be leading us to prayers. 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock Kenyan time, East African time, and 10 30 to 11 30 uh east african time we'll be having intense prayer and short charge of the word of god if you want to be there please plug in share wide in the name of jesus christ i love you jesus love you and jesus christ is lord have a blessed night in jesus mighty name amen